Okay. So, the last couple of weeks, we have focused on building your sphere of influence. Two weeks ago, we talked about how to add individuals to your sphere of influence. We went through some different exercises where we got you thinking about everybody that you come into contact with in the course of a week. These are personal vendors, friends, family, um, people you bump into at church, hairdressers, doctors, dentists, um, and went really deep on adding those people. Then last week, we looked at adding people in groups, getting entire lists of people, whether it's from your geo farm um, or uh, your fitness club or buying lists uh, from uh, places like um, Home Game, for example, or the Red X or um, Land Voice, uh, Fizbo's, uh, pre foreclosures, expires, those things. Um, we even talked about uh, buying lists from my Indian contact, uh, Product Seth, who will sell you 100,000 names and email addresses for $300. So at this point, we should all have extremely robust databases. The goal last time was to take whatever our number was and expand it by 10. So if we had 1,000 people, let's get to 10,000, like, like in 24 hours, using these various sources. So now that we've done that, and we have a robust database, um, it's appropriate that we talk about what in the world are we going to do with all these people. And the answer is different things, because we have to have a different strategy for these people according to the strength of the relationship. Those who um, are in our tight sphere of influence are going to get a lot of activity from us. Those who are names we just bought on a list, we don't actually have any affinity relationship with them or natural connection, they're going to get the least. But because we have them in massive quantities, we don't need a high conversion rate for them to turn into a significant source of business. So our close sphere is smaller in number but higher conversion rate. The outer spheres are larger in quantity, lower conversion rate, but they all can play a role in contributing to our transaction benchmark. Okay, kind of got the idea. Atlanta's here. We were just stalling until she got here. Atlanta, if everybody else introduced themselves, why don't you do the same? I'm Alana Seedson. I was going to say, I don't know. I've been here about three years. Alana Steveson, superstar. There still, we go. Still learning every day. Okay. Well, here you are. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, this whole class is built on this core belief. If you've been in my classes, you've heard me say this in different, different forms, but always the same message. There are three steps on the easiest and surest path to success in real estate sales. Database your sphere of influence. Get a database, a real database, and get everybody in it. That's what that means. Get complete contact information, not just a name and an email address, but get their cell number and get their home address, get their physical address. Um, and I'll give you a quick example of this. I had a, a person in my office a couple days ago trying to sell me an insurance policy, and he brought his manager with him. And I knew the insurance agent, but I had not uh, spent any time with the manager. In the course of the conversation, when it was appropriate, I turned to the manager and, and I said, you know, your agent Jim has got a great real estate agent, but do you? <laughs> if you were to buy or sell a home, do you have somebody that you would trust to handle that transaction? And he started telling me this story about who he used this last time, but she just wanted to sell us every house we walked in. So I said, oh, she wanted to sell a house. She didn't really care about your needs. Yeah, that was it. And, and in fact, we are building a house up on the lake and we're gonna need somebody to rent it out for us because they're gonna do it as an investment property. So I, 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 got a, I got a deal. So I said, well, do you have a business card? So I got his business card. Now I've got his full name, I've got his email address, I've got a work address. And since I had his name, while we're sitting there talking, I'm going to HCAD. I pull up his name, there's three of them. So I said, is your wife's, last, uh, your wife's name Susan or Sherry? Okay, then I got the right one, so now I got his home address. I've got his complete contact information. And I told him, you will be hearing from me. Now, I, I told him, I've got you now. You are in my sphere, and you're going to be hearing from me from now on. So, but that's how, you just have to develop that mindset. 
get people into your database and get complete contact information. Before they left that meeting, he was in my database. They're talking insurance, I'm filling it in. Because it's just, it's a lifestyle for me, it's a discipline for me. Two, market to your sphere of influence. That's what, that's what this class is about today. Get them into your database, because you, if, if they're not in your database, they really don't exist. For business purposes, they do not exist. It doesn't matter if you went to grade school with them or they're your best friend. If they're not in your database, they don't exist for business purposes. And then third, expand your sphere of influence. And that's what we focused on the last two weeks. You have your database, you've got a marketing plan in place, now you just have this mindset, get bigger, get bigger, get bigger. Everybody I go with, I've already added probably five people this week to my database um, that I've met in the course. I had almost identical situation yesterday, meeting with a financial planner who brought his manager. And I did the same thing to him that I did to the insurance manager earlier in the week. Got his complete contact information, including his wife's name, in my database now. And they want to buy in two to three years. But that, they ask, guess what? In two or three years, I'm still going to be selling real estate. So he's, he's there. And by then, he will have heard from me 36 times by direct mail and then and 156 times by video email. I mean, I'm going to be top of mind. So database your sphere, market to your sphere, expand your sphere. If you can internalize that belief that that's what my business is, you're going to be highly successful. So let's go deep on number two today. Market to your sphere. I'm going to suggest that, that however you describe them or group them, there's really three primary groups in your sphere. Local people you know. This is what most people consider their sphere. Friends, family, neighbors, past clients, and customers. Local people you want to know. These are like your FISBO leads, your Zillow leads, Trulia leads, people who are local who have a real estate need but you don't have a, a personal connection with them yet. And then finally, non-local people who can refer business to you. And that's primarily other real estate agents, but it could also be relocation companies, moving companies. Um, it can be an HR director at an oil company that moves employees in and out, but they're based in Lafayette, that kind of thing. You know, just think about your sphere, your world, who that might be, and you'll have three different groups. And then we will adopt a different strategy for each of them. So let's talk about the local people you know. Um, this is made up of past clients and customers, friends and family, real estate vendors, personal vendors, business networking groups, clubs and organizations, your church, your geo farms. I put geo farms in local people you know, even though I don't know all the people in my two geo farms. I've got 230 homes in one, 446 in the other. I don't even know 10% of them. But I put them in this category because I have an affinity relationship. I used to live in one of the neighborhoods, and I do live in the other neighborhood. So they know me. I'm on Nextdoor. I'm on Facebook. I was the president of the HOA in my old neighborhood. So I'm, I'm considering them people I know, even though if we bumped into each other at the grocery store, we wouldn't recognize each other. Okay, That's just my philosophy. These people are going to get the full meal deal, the most intensive and sometimes, sometimes expensive marketing efforts because the conversion rate with this group is high. It's well worth it. And I'll, I'll share with you some numbers uh, toward the end. Local people you want to know, Zillow, Trulia, Lead Street Leads, Fizbos, Fribos, Expireds, Pre-Foreclosures, Purchase Leads List, Cole Realty Resource Leads. These are the people um, that you don't know personally, but they're local. And, and if they don't have a real estate need now, they will at some point. And then finally, the non-local people. Um, think about this for a moment. Remax agents. Where is the REMAX of Texas Convention being held this year? Yeah, Marriott Waterway. So uh, I would suggest you go there with a big pile of business cards and don't just give them away. Trade. Get those cards back. And if you don't have a, a um, marketing list yet of other REMAX agents from outside your market area, that would be a great time to start. And it would be as simple as just send them an email once a month or a video email. You know, hi, this is Atlanta. I'm your 
Houston referral contact in in the, with Remax. Your Remax Houston referral contact. You know, business is great, but I've got room for more. That's all, just something simple. Once a month, just touch them. Um, and it was, it's, it's a significant source of business for me because I have done exactly that for three and a half years. Um, agents who share your designations. How many of y'all have a designation? What, what do you have? Got the GRI and the ADR. And you're forgetting a big oh, one. Oh, and the senior. The SRES. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. What you got, Teresa? Um, same with the, uh, the, what is it, the CHMS, the new home sales. Yes, mm -hmm. the, yeah. Certified, it's CNHS. CNHS. So um, those organizations will typically provide you a list of members, um, and you can find them in other markets. So I would ask for them um, in in Dallas, Austin, uh, San Marcos, New Braunfels, San Antonio, and begin marketing to them because you have an affinity relationship with them, and that's what I would I would bridge off that. You know, CRS is like doing business with CRSs. <laughs> SRESs probably are active in senior communities in Dallas and are likely to have people coming and going looking for that type of property here. Um, agents who share your language, if you have a unique language skill. Agents where you used to live. If you moved here from San Antonio, you ought to be marketing the San Antonio agents because, again, you have an affinity with them. Um, agents where you vacation or travel. Anybody ever go on a cruise in the Caribbean? Mm -hmm. You drop in on the Remax office there? Well, you should. You know what that's called? Business expense. <laughs> I like the way you think. That's right. Mm -hmm. It is. It, it actually is. If you document it, you email them in advance and you set an appointment, <laughs> even if it's just, I just want to drop by and see your office and introduce myself. And, um, and you can write off a significant portion of it. Um, agents in cities, which send a lot of people to Houston. NAR publishes a list every year. You can get a copy of it that shows you the primary cities that are sending people to live in Houston. And by the way, do you, anybody have any idea which ones they are? Mostly other Texas cities. They're not coming here from New York and Chicago and San Francisco. They're coming here from Dallas, San Antonio, and Austin, primarily. So you can develop a network of agents there. Um, uh, past clients who still have local connections. They may have moved to Seattle, but if they're still employed at Anadarko in the HR department, that's a good contact. You want to stay in touch with them because they may be coming back and they can refer you to their friends here. And then um, relocation companies. But these, these people are the most neglected sources of business for most agents. And I'm always trying to be contrarian. I'm always, always trying to look for opportunities that other agents have missed. We did a business planning session, a few of us, earlier today, and I talked about I'm marketing Fribos right now because nobody even knows what a Fribo is, much less marketing to them. It's wide open. I called, I made five dials on Monday, and they didn't hang up at me. They weren't mad at me because they'd already gotten 17 calls from other agents. They all, if they answered the phone, they talked to me, and one of them entered into a relationship with me. So, by the way, what is a Fribo? See what I mean? See, I'm not going to tell you either, okay? Just forget I mentioned it. For rent by owner. There you go. All right. What everybody gets. So everybody, regardless of what group they're in, local people you know, local people you want to know, or non-local referral partners, they're all going to get this, a monthly video email targeted to their needs. Um, and that can be, you know, in a geo farm, it could be, you know, talking about new trash pickup days or holiday decoration setup, whatever it is. It can be market trends, um, agent referral outreach, uh, consumer-oriented messages, invitations to events, holiday greetings. But, um, a monthly video email is just critical. It, video is where it's at if you have not gotten that message. And you do not have to be a Hollywood starlet to do good video. Because guess what? Normal people are not Hollywood starlets. And they, they may more relate to people who look like them, act like them, talk like them. That's us. So don't feel like you have to be somebody else that you're not to do this kind of stuff. 
and Meshworks is the vendor I use. I learned about them at the REMAX Top 500 Retreat back in October. They are a fantastic company. I signed up on site as soon as I heard about them at the, at the retreat. Um, it's only $8 a month for unlimited email sends. I gave up on trying to do video email last year when the, the costs were astronomical to, to, to do it to a wide level. To, to video email a thousand people or five thousand or ten thousand or fifty thousand, you can't afford to write the checks. But this is eight dollars a month unlimited. And let me let me just show you how easy it is. So this isn't necessarily this isn't to your database? It's everybody. It's anybody. Everybody in your database. That's oh, okay, the point. okay. So we provide them with our database. Yes, I'll show you what that looks like. And by the way, I invited them to come here next week. Next, a week from right now, next Thursday, they're going to be here in this training room and demo all this for you. And I would strongly recommend that you be here and that you sign up, commit to the eight dollars. Um, it'll be the it, it'll be the best eight dollars you spend all year. Okay, we are sorry we missed you. Why are you not logging in? Here we go. I just want you to see how simple it is. So here you go. You can upload your logo, choose a background, and then select a video from the library, and that means videos that you've uploaded to the site, which is just a simple upload like you upload a picture for the MLS. You can record a new video, just click that and just sit there at your desk and talk. Or you can add a YouTube video. So if you prefer to make your videos, upload them to YouTube, then you can just add in the YouTube link. Um, if you want to add additional website links, you can do that there, and here, and here, and here. These can be social media links. But that's, that's how easy it is. Now look at the, at the, we go to the bottom of the page. Oh, actually this one's got over to the side. So I put my, my subject line in. I decide if I want to send it now or later. So I can do all my videos on a Saturday and have them go out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday if I wanted to. I uh, choose my mailing list. There's a drop-down menu, and here's all my mailing lists, my, my geo farms. I've got REMAX agents in surrounding states. I've got real estate agents um, of all brands and companies outside the Houston metro area, um, and I just choose who I want to send it to. Um, let me, let me sh and, and then you hit send. Boom. It's that simple. But look at these contacts I've got in here. This is, this is what's unbelievable about this platform. I've got 65,000 homeowners in Katy, Texas. Um, Remax in Louisiana, 515 New Mexico, Oklahoma, Texas, real estate. I've got 47,000 agents in Texas outside the Houston metro area. Um, and then Windsor Hills and Windsor Lakes, which are, are, are two of my uh, geo farms. That would cost me three grand a month with any other video email platform and it's unlimited and they and they are so nice they I had trouble uploading these bigger lists so I just email them the list and about three days later I get an email saying it's all done it's all there so it, it, it really is a super easy platform uh, and you're going to be staying in touch with thousands or tens of thousands of people for virtually no cost so I, I strongly urge you to consider putting that on your marketing plan. Frank, I saw a thing that it said newsletter. Are you able to send other things other than video through Meshworks? I, I don't think so. Okay. That would be a great question for them next week. I got it because <laughs> I wanted the video. Yeah. But, but I don't know. I would think it does, but I don't know. I saw something that said newsletter, so maybe it lets you do mm -hmm. a newsletter as well. Yeah, maybe it does. Okay. Um, what local people that you want to know get? Okay, these are your Zillow leads, Trulia leads, um, purchase leads, um, could be your Cole Realty resource leads. By the way, is there a clue here to the answer? What local people you want to know get, what do they get? Phone call. That's right, they get a phone call. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the bad news. If you can suck it up and get over that, you'll be fine the rest of the class. But 
there has never yet been invented a more efficient or effective way to generate new clients than the telephone. It, it, I was talking to somebody last week about this, so if, you, if you've heard this for the second or third time, please forgive me. But if you just picked me up and dropped me in another market somewhere and said, you have no income, you have no sphere of influence, you have no, debate, no database, go. I would buy lists and get on the phone and start dialing. Well, that's what I did this past Monday morning. I've got four hours of lead generation on my calendar. I made five calls to my Fribo source and I set, I set an appointment. I've got an appointment to show this Saturday from five dials. Now what instead of, if, instead of calling five, what if I call 50? Or what if I call 500? You see what I mean? And that's my recommendation. If you have excess capacity, get on the phone and start calling these until your calendar just books up with service appointments. Um, most powerful tool ever invented, right there, to grow a real estate business. And that's how you convert FISBOs, expires, pre-foreclosures, uh, circle calls around listings. You can knock on their door, you can send them a postcard, you can send them a video email, and they'll be delighted with all of that, but you are never going to get their business in significant numbers until you do what? Pick up the phone and call. And let me tell you this, I have made thousands, ten, probably tens of thousands of prospecting calls in my career. I cannot remember anybody ever being rude to me. That doesn't mean it hasn't happened. Probably has. But it was just like water off a duck's back. I mean, just, I just if it's happened, it didn't, I just moved on. Okay? So don't be afraid of this. It's not a cobra. It's not going to bite you. In fact, what I discover, every time I go into a calling session, a calling block on my calendar, I'm very apprehensive before I do it, even after all these years, because I really don't want to. I don't want to call people I don't know. They might be mad. I might catch them at an awkward time. They might think I'm a used car salesman. Nobody wants that. So I'm apprehensive. But because I know it's vital to my business, I force myself to do it. And I mean, invariably, it's, it's always the same. It's exactly the same. I make two or three calls. I have some great conversations. I get so fired up, I want to keep dialing all day long. And I don't, because i got other stuff to do. But once you break through that initial resistance, you'll find you, I think you'll find you really enjoy it. Because most people that you're dialing have a need. As a real estate professional, you have the ability to meet that need. And if you can project that with confidence, you're going to get some very warm responses. Okay. Okay, are we able to go on? Okay. All right, here we go. <clears throat> what local people you know also get. Okay, so everybody's getting the V-mail. The local people you don't know but you want to know are getting what? Phone calls. Phone calls, thank you. And then the people that you know, your close-in sphere of influence, remember I said they get the full meal deal? What does that look like? This is it. They get a Facebook friend request. Because you're friends. Or you want to be closer. You want to know them as friends. A weekly Facebook Live video, they're going to get that from you. They're going to get a monthly postcard. Remember I warned you, this is the intensive and sometimes expensive part. But you get high conversion rates within this group, and so it's worth it. And then two annual client appreciation events. How, how many of y'all are doing the Facebook Live videos yet? Y'all are being shy, because I know the answer is not no one. Nobody wants to hand up all their hand. Okay, hold on. Remember what I said when we talked about video and mesh mail? You can all do this. They're not, your friends and family are not looking for Hollywood starlets. They're looking for you to be you. Um, and I'm going to give you an example of that. Um, let me, oh, let me go to my feed. I've, done, I've, I've just put this on my, business, my 2017 business plan and uh, launched my 2017 business plan December 1st um, so that it's run on all cylinders January 1st when I get to 2017. 
Let me scroll down here. There's Misha. Isn't she cute? <laughs> I don't even like cats, and I've fallen in love with her. <laughs> Is she a ragdoll? She's a, she's a Siberian. We went to Fort Worth to get her because she's <clears throat> non-hypoallergenic. Huh. So are your videos that you're going to show us for Facebook, are they all related to... Um, are they all going to be related to real estate, or is it a, is it a mixture, and kind of what's the mixture? Um, 80, 20? Everything that I'm going to show you is real estate related. Okay. But um, I did one on Sunday morning that was about theology. I saw that one. Yeah. Okay, check this out. 752 views. Wow. 49 likes, and here's the power six shares okay um, now, did you boost that or no that no was just no that's mm -hmm. uh, it's all completely organic um and i didn't even do it live right. even though it says it's facebook live okay here we go learning lesson i'm scared to death right i'm gonna make a fool of myself you can change your privacy settings to only me i'll give you the steps for that in a moment mm -hmm. You go Facebook Live, but you're only live to you. Nobody else sees it. And then you can post it. And that's right. When you're done, if you like it, then you change the setting on the video to public, and boom, and it says, Sally was live on Facebook. Sorry you missed it. <laughs> okay? Now, the advantage of doing a real, real live is that everybody on your friends list gets a notification. Their phones are binging. Bing, 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 bing. Raul is live on Facebook. They literally get these messages. And that's why you want to get to the point that you're comfortable doing them live because you will get higher buy-in. People will like, what, what, what? Um, but you still, you'll still get a huge bang for your buck if you just do only you and then change the setting. And some of y'all probably need to start there so that you, uh, you feel better about it. I, I'm looking for the the audio cord, gosh, because I wanted you to be able to hear this. Um, here we go. All right. Okay, this one. This is really rough. I, I made this one Saturday. I'm holding my phone in my hand, walking around in my office. Okay, the quality is terrible. Um, and I'm sharing this with you to say, you can at least do this good, okay? Let's see if we got sound here. Gosh, it doesn't even want to play. That's how bad it is. So let me just tell you, here's all it says. The headline on it is what to do when you can't make your mortgage payment. Now that, that's got to relate to some people. And so it just goes like this. Hey, everybody, Frank Gray here. I just want to let you know that in the last couple of days, I completed certification training for the SFR. That means now I am a short sale and foreclosure specialist. So if you're having trouble making your mortgage payments or you know anybody who is, I'm in a better position than ever before to counsel you regarding your options. When most people are in that situation, they think the only options are foreclosure or bankruptcy. But there are other options, like a forbearance, where we, we would negotiate with the lender to restructure the loan. Um, I'll be happy to share all those options with you or any of your friends who find yourself in that difficult situation. Give me a call. I'm here to help. Boom. That's it. Okay? And that was rough, just walking around. You know, I won't do that again. It was so bad. Um, but... Here's, here's my point. I didn't keep it from going out because it was bad. Something bad is better than nothing. And if y'all can wrap your heads around that, you'll get in the game. Something is better than nothing. So, um, and I did a better one. Let me see if this one will play. Uh, a couple weeks before that, I was actually sitting down and had a, this was on my back porch, um, or give you a quick little so story here we go. that might. Here we go. 
Hey everybody, Frank Gray here. I want to share with you a quick little story that might explain why your home isn't showing or hasn't sold. If your home is on the market or if you have friends whose home is on the market and they've expressed frustration about the lack of showings and offers, they may be saying, well, it's the holiday season and there just aren't a lot of people out there in the market right now. Although that is traditionally the case, it is not necessarily true this year. I've seen more buyer and seller activity in November going right. By the way, have you too? Yes. Well, since the election? Yes. Yeah. So anyways, I have a little rant here about agents who don't use CSS. Oh, right. And I tell an actual story of, from that week where I had a buyer who would look at two houses. Both of them required you to contact the agent, call the agent, all I get is voicemail. And one of them says, I don't even check voicemails until after 5 p.m. Well, he wanted to see the house at 5 p.m. The other one had a voicemail that said, call my office. I call the office, this was on Tuesday. They're closed for the week. And so I talk about the fact that neither one of these homes got shown, got offers, got sold, because the listing agent made it difficult to schedule an appointment. And so I said, if you're having trouble getting showings or getting offers on your home, ask your real estate agent, are you using a professional third-party showing service that makes it easy for other agents to show in your property? But, so that's all. So the headline was, <clears throat> on this one, and they don't check them until the end of the day, but I'm welcome to leave a message. The headline was, one big reason your home might not be showing or selling. So I just put one little tag to kind of tweak their interest. I try to make it consumer oriented. Again, 617 views, 28 likes, and three shares, and, and tons of input. Um, well, not tons, but that's, that's pretty good. Uh, and a lot of these are agents. So anyways, one is just setting a little camera on my uh, table outside. That's so funny. Oh, have you seen that oh one? Oh my God, it was hilarious. Oh my goodness. What is that called? I'll spare you. That one. <laughs> Pando, I don't know. You all have to show just a speck of it. <laughs> just, if you're my friend on Facebook, and you should be, go check it out. <laughs> that is so um, yeah, <laughs> it's embarrassing. Um, okay, so Facebook Live. You have to do it from your mobile device. You can't do it from your desktop yet. And I, I bought a little uh, spring uh, attachment for my iPhone to clip around it that I can just screw into any uh, tripod. So I have a little tabletop tripod. I can put it on a big one like this. It, it's super simple. Um, and I, uh, I got a phone call. I'm going out to list a home this Saturday, $400,000 home. Now it's in all the way to South Houston, but would you drive an hour to list a $400,000 home? I'll do it all day long. And here's what the guy said to me. I knew this guy at church in Katy three or four years ago. We haven't stayed in touch, but I've marketed to him. He says, hey, we just inherited my mom's house. We need somebody to sell it. And I asked my wife, and she said, well, Frank, because we've been watching your videos. That's what he said. We've been watching your videos. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, it's powerful. It's a moneymaker, and it's free. That's even cheaper than $8 a month. So you, you have to be doing this. Don't worry about quality. Ready, fire, aim. Get in the game, and then you can tweak and improve and get better as you go along. Client appreciation events, I say do two of these a year. Um, party in the park, pie pickup, pie delivery, business mixers, night at the movies. You know, Becky does hers every year. She had a big crowd here again um, this year. They were had people coming and going all day, picking up their pies out of the conference room. Um, I did my Elvis event uh, for my clients back in October, had a picture perfect day, had 60 people show up. Of course, I reached out to 600, um, so I got the benefit of the 540 who didn't come plus the 60 who did. And these folks, uh, again, old friends from several years ago, they attended the event. I hadn't seen them since, but before that, but they came to my event because I invited them. They called me this week. And they said, Frank, we found a house we want to buy. We want you to help us buy it. We need you to help us sell our current house, too. Okay. Okay. 
why did they think of me after three years? Well, I've been marketing to them, but I think this event really solidified it because we had, we got face to face again. So I spent about $1,200 on that event. You know, I had to bring in the, the talent and put them in a hotel for a couple days. Um, then we had hot dogs and, you know, different things, about 1200 bucks. But my vendors paid half of it. If I'd, if I'd really been on the ball, I could have got the whole thing covered. So spent 600 bucks basically to touch to have 60 people live in front of me. Well, I do that all day long. So I, I really encourage this. I've done the business mixers. I've done the pie deliveries. It, I spent $1,200 on pies at Costco um, last year, this kind of thing. But um, if you'll do this, it will return. I, I knew an agent in Ohio who every year uh, took every one of her clients to the country club for a big holiday dinner, kind of like what we did last night. Well, she did that herself for her clients. And she said, I'll spend $10,000. But she said, it never fails. I walk out of there with two or three deals that I didn't have when I walked in. From In the actual night, she'll get the, hey, we need to list our house. We need to sell our house. So I'm not saying go that big. Do something more modest if you need to to get started. But do something. Get in the game to show your appreciation. Um, and you'll get the value from those who show up and, and those that you just reach out to. Okay, um, I already kind of mentioned this on the Facebook Live. If you're nervous, go to Settings, Privacy, Who Can See My Stuff, and then Just Me. That's the process. And I've already uploaded this presentation to Backagent. Oh. So you can find it under Agent Training Manuals. Um, and then when you like it, you can um, reshoot it live or just change the privacy setting. Okay? All right. Now, let's talk about postcards because, again, to the local people we know, they get the full meal deal. And that includes the Facebook friend request, the weekly video. They also get postcards. And I want to share with you some options here, and then I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing. Um, Vistaprint, how many of y'all have used them or are using them? Okay, very popular. A great option. Um, about 55 cents delivered for an oversized one side color, backside black and white. It's addressed, you know, Robert Smith or current resident, so it's personalized in the address. Um, I built my business on that right there. Postcards to my sphere using that source. Um, there are other options which may get better results. And um, I'm, I'm implementing both of these in my 2017 business plan. Slightly more expensive, Alpha Graphics is a printer here in the Woodlands. It's 85 cents delivered for their postcards, but it's eight and a half by 11. It's a full size, two side color card stock, and variable data. That's really why I'm doing it. Now it's not just addressed to Robert Smith, but it says, Dear Robert, and in the closer, you can say, hey, Robert, I hope you found this information helpful. You can put on the front of the postcard, you know, prepared exclusively for Robert and Ellen Smith. It's variable data. Whatever the, the name is on the contact, they'll weave that name in everywhere in the postcard. Every postcard's unique in that regard. And I, I'm uh, hopeful that I'm going to get a higher result and a better return. I'm going to try it this year. Um, I have, you have to design your own uh, on something like Canva, which I'm learning. Um, or if you have a, a different graphic design program, but you have to you know, deliver it to them with it ready to go in your database. Um, most expensive, real marketing. They were here in our room, training room, two years ago. Did any of you all sign up for their program? I know Adam Olson did. Uh, I think Lisa Roth did. Anybody up? Nobody else here? Very, very high quality. It's the highest quality stuff I've ever seen. And by the way, I brought tons of samples up here. Um, here's an example of their 8.5 by 11. It really, it's heavy card stock. It's laminated. You can see the address goes right in here. So this is the postcard. Um, super nice. Now this is a just listed card. But what they uh, will typically do on the eight and a half by 11 is a market update card. And they do all the data search. I mean, they do all the work. They design it, build it. You just sign off on it. You approve it. 
Um, so it is more expensive. It's 89 cents for a, a half size, five and a half by 11 postcard, which would be half this sheet. So it's still a big postcard. Um, it is variable data, and they do all the design work. Um, and, and then for those larger pieces, it's a dollar thirty-nine, or you can even go all the way up to an eleven by seventeen for a um, dollar seventy-nine. This is designed to be mailed. You see the window here, and again, they do all all the design work on it. So. Um, I'm not recommending you do a dollar seventy-nine to all six hundred people every month. Um, I'm going to be doing the the uh, smaller postcards um, every two months, and then the half size third month for, for a targeted group. But I, uh, if you're just getting started, I would go with something like Vistaprint. Keep your costs low, and then when you have the cash flow and you want to see if you can improve your conversion rate and get a better ROI, consider one of these. Um, more expensive sources. Any questions about this piece? Who are y'all using for your direct mail? We should use Vistaprint. Okay. Minute Man and Millikins. Oh, okay. Great. Are you having good success with them? Mm -hmm. Are they doing variable data for you? No, they are not. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, EDDM? Every door direct mail? No, no, I just get it printed and then I put the labels. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Yeah, that would be less expensive. Okay, so um, here are just some samples. I brought hard copy samples, but this is what I we would do on Vistaprint. Just a happy client. This is the cover of the postcard. This is the back of the postcard. Uh, again, the black and white. Um, this is a blow up of the 11 by 17 I showed you. But see, this is how, again, this was mailed. Look here at the bottom, prepared exclusively for Jonathan and Angel Marie Williams. It, this, it's, it makes an impact. Um, there's the inside. But this could be anything. It doesn't have to be a property brochure. It could be market update. It could be anything. And you tell them, and they'll, uh, they'll create it for you. And they pull the data. They do all the research. Um, that's the single page, eight and a half by 11, double-sided, just a big picture. And by the way, when they were here two years ago, I really liked this color scheme. It's playing off the Remax red, white, and blue, but with a richer, more luxurious feel. So I, I changed my uh, marketing colors and all my, even though I didn't become their client, I took one of those to, um, to Minuteman and Tomball because they were doing all my personal brochures and I had them do it in those colors. And they really do look nice. Um, and then the last thing I want to share with you is exactly how I'm using all these tools in my uh, direct mail campaign this year. So I'm doing the expensive ones to my Windsor Hills farm because this is where I live. And I've lived there a year and a half and I haven't been able to get a single listing in that neighborhood yet. So I am pulling out the big guns this year. I, I, if nothing else, I am relentless. And I will become the dominant agent in that neighborhood at some point. So I'm spending the big bucks on it. Um, Alpha Graphics uh, postcards to my old geo farm in Tomball. I'm only doing that six times a year. It's a smaller group, so it'll be less expensive. But I've already got personal dominance in this. So I'm, just, I'm in maintenance mode there. I don't have to hit them with the big guns every single month. Um, Alpha Graphics postcards to local people I know. There's 290 of them. And again, I, I know them. So it's just every other month. It's not going to be every single month. I'm trying to keep the cost down. And then I'm doing the Alpha Graphics to my non-local referral partners. And these are primarily REMAX agents that I've met over the years. I've got 282 of those. And they're going to hear from me six times a year. Now. If you think that's a lot of money, it actually is. There's the breakdown. My Windsor Hills, I'm going to spend 5,600. Willow Creek, 1,100. Local people, 1,500. Non-local, 1,500. It comes out to almost $10,000. On a monthly basis, that's like $800 a month. That's like a Porsche payment. Okay, that's... How am I going to sell that to my wife, by the way? <laughs> right? This is how I... Call her and tell her. <laughs> Honey, baby. <laughs> this is how I sell it to her, right here. 
That is just 3.8% of the revenue expected to be generated from these sources. These are the only sources on my business plan. It's really a good way to return them. Yeah, and by the time you add in all my other expenses to, to run my business, I'm still less than 10%. Um, this is by far the biggest single item, but 3.8%, you know, to, to generate 250000 I'll, I'll do that all day long. So now you gotta, you got to have the cash flow to get it funded, and that's why I started with less expensive measures and got the, you know, got the wheels turning. So I'm not saying you go this level up front, but this can be an intermediate step for you. Questions? Okay, I'm going to quiz you then. You ready? What is the one thing that I recommended that every single person in your database get from you? Nope. The video. The video email. You weren't here. That was a good guess. The video email. Did you see how many people I have in my contact database? A hundred and four. 15,000 people. They're going to get a video email from me every month at a total cost of what? Eight dollars. Eight dollars. That's great. That's why everybody gets it. Okay? So cheap. Now, if they're local and you've bought the list, they have a real estate need, but you don't have a personal connection, there's no affinity relationship. What's the best way to convert them into closed business? Raul? Phone call. Phone call. There we go. There we go. Phone call. And then, for your highest conversion people, the local people that you know, even if they're on the fringe, but you have some connection with them, church, real estate vendors, personal vendors, kids go to school, whatever, what do they get from you? First of all, Facebook request. Facebook friend request. Second. Video. How often? Weekly. A weekly Facebook live video. What do they get after that? Monthly postcard. A monthly postcard, and I give you options for that. And then finally, the annual two, annual two annual events. And I would recommend a spring and a fall because the weather is better. If you'll do those things, those simple things, you will see your business go to the next level. If you're not doing those things now and you just do those things, you're going to see your business skyrocket. Because the people most likely to do business with you are the people who already know you, like you, and trust you. But you have to keep in mind they also know, like, and trust 10 other real estate agents. So the one who's going to get their business is the one who is in front of them consistently communicating that they are a competent and caring real estate professional. Your postcards will do that. Your monthly v-mails will do that. Your weekly Facebook Live videos will do that. To your question, I'm going to be doing my Facebook Live business videos on my business page and then sharing to my personal page. And then I'm going to be doing my theology um, <laughs> Facebook live videos on my personal page. I want to maintain that distinction so that nobody, Facebook doesn't think I'm abusing my personal and that my friends don't think I'm using it for solicitation either. Would you repeat where that, that again? Yeah, business on business, personal on personal. But on business, once like everything I do on my business page, I then share to personal. But it shows up as a share. So Facebook is fine with it, and I, I just have this perception that my friends are finer with it than just going directly to personal with it. Okay? And if you go to personal, you can't share to business. So if it's a business, you need to start on your, on your business page and then share to personal. Okay? I know that's a, that's a big load of hay in a short amount of time. Any, any questions about that? How's your business plan looking for 2017? Good. Yeah, it should be in its final stages. In fact, you should be in implementation mode by now, really. If you're not, don't worry about it. You've got a couple weeks to get to get up and running. 
but it, it, it's a slog. If you've got a robust plan, even as simple a simple plan like this, and you actually go to start implementing, you'll be shocked. It, it's going to take you a while. Get your database in order, get it uploaded to the proper places to figure out how to turn off that Facebook Live button once you shoot your video. I mean, there's little details like that. As you send it out. And well, I did that. I did it last weekend. And I've done a number of Facebook Live videos, and doggone it, I couldn't find the off button. And I'm live. I'm really live. <laughs> And the thing goes on and on, and you can hear me, doggone it, where did it, and then you're seeing the desk, and I'm trying, I turn the phone off, and I turn the phone back on, and it's still recording now. And by here, and people are already sharing. I had two shares before I could get logged back in and delete the video. Okay? Yes, just like any other post. I deleted it, I reshot it, and then I sent personal messages to the two people who shared. I said, I said, I already deleted. Please go back and you know take another look at the correct version. But you can't take those that they shared off, right? I, mean, I, I presume I can't. I don't know. I presume that it that it goes back to the root and deletes, but I don't know. But but here's my point. There's little details. Mm -hmm. You might think on December 31st you can put this plan together. You can't. As simple as this is, there's a lot of moving pieces, and as you get into it, you'll see there's more than you expected. So get after it now. Make this a full court press to get all the, the pieces in place so that when January 1 hits, man, you're ready to rock and roll and the, and the leaves are pouring in. Okay? All right, so next Thursday, Meshworks will be here. And uh, they'll answer all your questions, and, uh, and I think you'll be as impressed as, as I've been. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you.